Court Reporter with Stovall and Associates. Welcome back to Court Reporter with Stovall and Associates. I'm your host, Mike Aglinski. Uh, we're back with Bob Adams, a newly appointed town board member here in Pahrump. Um, and before we went to our commercial break, we were talking about uh, public land usage mm -hmm. and, um, uh, and, in fact, had alluded to uh, sometimes trying to garner more public interest if there's not a direct um, interest in how public lands are used. Um, in the commercial, we were talking about um, some of the economic benefit um, that you have in mind uh, coming onto the town board with your prior experience with the public uh, lands use uh, board. Um, can you kind of tell our viewers, you know, where you think um, the, the lay person who doesn't necessarily use those open public lands is often to say a person like you, like you as, as an off-roader or me as a hunter. Mm -hmm. Why should they care? I, I guess the, uh, a healthy environment is, is something that's beneficial to all of us. That, uh, um, but you're thinking of someone that never really leaves the highway or, you know, their idea of the outdoor is just uh, going to a park or, or something like that. Sure. But, uh, um, um, I, I guess one thought would be economic uh, benefit to their community. How so? Uh, uh, Arizona is uh, just through OHV recreation is uh, uh, three to four billion dollar industry. Uh, Colorado, which just over a billion, that uh, that's more of a benefit for rural counties than mm -hmm. it is for an urban. Uh, though, if you actually look at the mixes, Arizona did an excellent study, and you'll look at the OHV expenditures as far as vehicles go. Um, that's the reason that it's so high in the urban counties. But when you look at, at the services consumed, such as uh, purchase of fuel mm -hmm. and uh, the other good lodging. Uh, lodging and so on and so forth, that uh, that's where it's just high. I mean, we're looking at some of the rural counties where this is 20% of their taxes. That is it really that coming high? Out. Yeah, it's just, it's just uh, um, uh, Arizona is probably the state that's done the best study. They've also got one of the most developed OHV systems. Um, Colorado, the same. Uh, Utah hasn't done it to the same extent statewide. They've done it more locally, county by county. But uh, uh, the Paiute Trail System in Utah is just a phenomenal system. That uh, um, It's an area that's used by hunters, uh, off-roaders. Uh, it's a managed area. Uh, the trails are all designated. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the, the natural beauty, I mean, it's, it's excellent management. The natural beauty of the area is just, it's just, just stupendous. It's just something to go out there. It's just breathtaking just to be there. Do, but, you, uh, do you kind of envision um, um, a cottage industry based around um, OHV, um, similar to what you see with like snow, uh, uh, snow sleds, like, or I should say, um, uh, what do you call them? Um, the off-road vehicles in the snow. I'm drawing a blank right Snowmobiles. Now. Yeah, snowmobiles. Right. The snowmobile industry in the Northeast, where you actually have lodging that's on snowmobile right. trails yeah. and commerce. Is right. that something you've seen that happens in Sunbelt? Um, we'll get a little bit north of here. Um, a friend that's, uh, he's currently a, uh, an OHV commissioner, that uh, Wayne Fisher, um, up in Lake Tahoe. And uh, he's, he's working on trail systems up there that uh, what you're referring to is, I think, a point-to-point -point where, uh, mm -hmm. and that's something that's already happening in Nevada. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's already been pretty much fully developed in Utah that uh, you get the area, the towns around the Marysville. Uh, uh, Marysville, I guess, would be right in the middle of it, but uh, anywhere in the Paiute Trail that uh, a substantial portion of the income for those communities and counties comes from OHV recreation that... Uh, uh, something I'd like to see if I could accomplish uh, on the, the western side of the state is a trail that would go from uh, possibly uh, Prim mm -hmm. up through Pahrump, uh through Beatty, and uh, there's there's a lot of interest in Esmeralda County because you know really there's what a thousand people there and, right. and uh, um, so the tax dollars that come in from outside are, are just, you know, it's, it's what they're looking for. But uh, I'll run the trail through uh, uh, Gold Point, Goldfield, mm -hmm. um, and actually set some events on uh, up there. But uh, run it up through Beatty and uh, then start heading east up through uh, Carver's 
and uh, Round Mountain and uh, tie into the existing Shoshone Trail System, which ties in or will soon tie into the Silver State Trail System, mm -hmm. which uh, runs up and down the, uh, the eastern boundary of the state. So when you're saying these well-developed systems like Arizona and, mm -hmm. and Utah have had, right. um, are you able to attract annual or seasonal events where people actually would travel from other parts of the country to run those trails? Oh, definitely, definitely. I, I didn't bring any of the information with me. I can, I can, I can get it to you on some of. The, I mean, there, there's been some excellent studies, economic studies, uh, and I've, 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 I've shared a lot of that with the uh, the uh, tourist commission and uh, our, our tourism advisory board. Mm -hmm. That uh, and. Um, uh, they look at the money that uh, off-road recreation brings in, and they're they're really excited about it. So, uh, um, what can happen in Utah right now that you can hop on a bike uh, with a backpack and and uh, you can spend a couple weeks just traveling around the state? Mm -hmm. And uh, um, when the Silver State Trail systems are complete, that uh, uh, hopefully you'll be able to go from um, one end, uh, the north end of Vegas, uh, go all the way up through um, uh, Battle Mountain area, come back around through Tonopah, mm -hmm. and uh, then back down to Pahrump. And, uh, uh, that's a serious trail. That's a serious trail, but uh, um, there'll be routes all along the way uh, where you'll be able to come into towns mm -hmm. and uh, fuel services, lodging, so on and so forth. Uh, back on the bike or the quad the next day and uh, and go ahead and make another hundred miles or whatever <laughs> and it, it really works out well as far as looking at the locations of towns and so on and so forth and uh, fueling stops there's a, a a few we've got to figure some um, alternatives out as far as how they're going to make that long but uh, a lot of it is, is if there's a challenge people are going to figure out how to do it and sure. uh, um, especially a lot of utility quads that uh, they carry enough fuel they can go a couple hundred miles they're not going to have a problem with it uh, right. and maybe that's going to be uh, what most of the riders are going to be on these adventure trails do you have an idea uh, or are you going to be proposing I guess as you're in your new position um, uh, the return on investment versus, say, the infrastructure costs in putting in these trails, I assume, is fairly low. It's fairly low. The investment costs, uh, uh, where you're going to run into, say, an area of environmental concern or, mm -hmm. or whatever critical environmental concern that uh, um, you're going to have to find a route around it or designate and build a road through it, a route through it. And... Uh, um, there's a couple of riparian areas in Utah where I've seen that done right above uh, Beaver mm -hmm. that uh, um, I don't know what the actual cost of it was, but uh, um, I, I know the income that uh, that uh, the community of Beaver is making. Off Beaver's done a tremendous through, amount right? doing yeah, off-road right. stuff, yeah. Yeah, they've got two or three off-road shops, a couple of snowmobile shops. I hunt up there all the time. Right, yeah, yeah, that uh, uh, they, they do, they, um, a lot of credit cards that the bill goes to Nevada have been used there. So. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Adams, I really appreciate you being on the show tonight and uh, looking forward to you serving your term. And uh, we'll probably have you back, continue on the subject and talk about uh, some other current affairs when you, uh, get uh, set in place, okay? Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Right. We'll be back next week, uh, Thursday, 5.30. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next week. Court Reporter with Stovall and Associates.